Listen, one thing I know about Replenish is that this is a family business, right? And, you know, when I kind of just dig into you guys' story a little bit, there's so much connection to those who come before you guys, you know, your mother, your grandmother. Like, how were the people, you know, the people around you guys and your family structure, how important were they to helping the inner child, you know, stay stay in her power and, like, you know, affirming the young lady who was very book smart and just, you know, on, on her mission. How important were they in you guys' story? Our mother is a source of unconditional love. That <laughs> yeah. is her lesson, and I truly mean that. I think we both can say that. Like, mm -hmm. she allowed us, she raised us through that lens, right? Like, this idea that um, we are different, but we're very, we're similar, me and Chanel and I, but different. And mm -hmm. so my, my mother parent parented us different and mm -hmm. she was a single mo mom excuse me um she was a single mom right yeah, yeah. for the majority our, of her life know, yeah. we love her dad yeah. but she was you know she did a lot of the work yeah. right yeah. um my dad was in a space of finding himself and mm -hmm. learning he lost his parents early in life so mm -hmm. he just had to learn right, right. and now we you know we, we don't understand. look back with yeah. um regret or resentment he actually says you probably did better off <laughs> um, but our mom our mother was a source of unconditional love and she she always spoke to my greatness I also had a baby when I was 18 so she had to, she was also a teen mom you know, she was a teen mom mm -hmm. and then and she was adopted so mm -hmm. her biological mother was a teen parent she was 16 and was forced to give her up for a, a adoption um, and we now know her and she now lives here and she's a part of the lineage wow. so yeah, it's the lineage of really black women, right? Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. idea that, you know, I think we focus a, we we focus so much, and we needed to focus on the trauma of 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 slavery and all of these things, you know, especially as black women. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like we can bring to the forefront our triumph of how we come so far, right? And black women, we care. We, right. We've cared for the world. That's we've right. tilled the soil. We've cared for children that are not ours. Like, mm -hmm. true altruism, honestly, lives inside of us. Mm -hmm. But now we're in a space, you know, we say self-care first because as black women, we want to bring that to the forefront because the caregiver has to also receive. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's right? good. Just, yeah. We do, yeah. you know, and that's important to us. And that's how we cultivated our business. We really extracted um, from the way we were raised. Our mother, we should, we didn't have a ton of money, right? But we learned to work with what we have. Mm -hmm. So when you see replenish, you see old things made new. You see mm -hmm. things that um, have been refurbished. Yeah. Um, you see things that you can find in your own home because that's beautiful, right? Like this idea that we don't have to go so far away from ourselves to access right. love, to that's access right. joy. And it's working with what you have. Yeah, it's it's a powerful thing. And it's like like how you said, we don't have to look at it. Um, we don't have to stay in this the darkness. It's like, what, what have I learned? What lessons have I learned? What's my strength? Mm -hmm. And caregiving is a strength. Mm -hmm. But it can also, you know... It, without receiving, it becomes unhealthy. But caregiving is a strength. And so how can we start to really pour back into ourselves so that we can still highlight that strength? Because we have a full cup now. We're not, you know, empty. Yeah. Because we're yeah. giving back to ourselves. And this idea of care is embodied with and in, in a bowl of, you know, so much empathy, you know, um, Restoration. I mean, there's so much in this bowl of care that we have to offer mm -hmm. as black women. And it's black women led. And, and also, we're on a mission to, we want to change the trajectory moving forward of how the world is operating. And, and care is missing a lot of the times, most yeah. of the times. Yeah. True care, right? Like this idea of honest care for self mm -hmm. first, and then the pebble that creates the ripple, and then your family, and then community, and then out into the world. Did that always come naturally to you guys, or was there a process for you guys to kind of get comfortable in caring for yourself? Or was there some bumps along the way that was like, you know what, I'm not taking care of myself right now. I'm not being yeah. kind to myself. That's why we called it Replenish, mm. because it's a reminder to us to replenish ourselves. And I think for me, the pandemic was when I was able to sort of turn the ship around where I started caring for myself first. And that's mm -hmm. why I think it was really important for us to slow down, not operate like we used to. Let's restructure this thing. It starts with us. I think that's when we first really realized, okay, we got to 
do our own self-care. I mean, we knew, it's, theoretically, we knew it, but right. it wasn't always in practice because right. we were hustling, trying to right. get this business going and just in the throes of day-to-day -day business and on this wheel, just keep going, surviving. going, going, surviving. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit and it's a forced silence. That's right. And so you're, you have a moment to like, okay, let me, let me start with myself. Let me sit in this quiet and let me start with myself. And now I have something to pour into. Mm -hmm. Now I'm trusting this unknown space because I can feel myself in it. I think the pandemic yeah. also, you know, to echo what you're saying is, you know, grieving the ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to grieve the ego. Because we were held up in capitalistic views, too. Yeah. We have to recondition our minds. That's you right. Know, when you have a business, you're like, I got to make money. I got to do these things. Mm -hmm. And you start getting further and further away from yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's where we were headed. That's it right. It was like, ooh, halt. Mm -hmm. The ancestors all aligned. <laughs> and came and was like, listen, y'all. I got to redirect the ship. We got to redirect it. And mm -hmm. so we had to grieve the ego. That's also a death. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that idea. And then it was like this, okay, redirect the ship. We are the actual mission, right? Yeah. We are act the actual mission. And when you really start stepping into that, beautiful things unfold, serendipity. I mean, that's really how our business, I mean, everything that's happened, it has been ser serendipitous. It has been like, I can't believe that just happened. I don't even know how we're still here. Those sorts of stories. You know that you're in, on the right path when you have, mm -hmm. is it serendipity? Is that the word I'm looking for? When you, when you have, what is the word? Miracles happen, mm -hmm. yeah. right? You just grace, you know, mm -hmm. all, of the, all of those attributes, you know you're on the right path because it's, it's telling you, hey, you're covered. Yeah. And the worst, deepest, darkest challenges, somehow we've been covered. Yeah, I, I I love that because even even for myself, right? Like that, that is very true for me as well. With with growing a business, creating a business, especially in the internet era, yeah, you can easily do things that are outside of yourself. You are doing things for the analytics, for the data, for the you know for the response, right? For the validation, yeah. um, or just to get some level of like you know, <laughs> when you're trying to do things for monetary gain and for money, there's always like this low-hanging fruit that you can do, especially like I'm sure that y'all see in, in podcasts and in media space, I could easily get up here and say some outlandish stuff right here and it'll go crazy on the internet, right? Yeah, yeah. Or I could, you know, try to sit down with people who have these like massive followings and, you know, promote around that converse, conversation to kind of grow the audience or whatever, right? And there was a time where, you know, er, early on, I was really leaning into looking at my guests from the standpoint of like, okay, what kind of following did this person have? Like, you know, they're going to, you know, will they get on there and say something that will help us, you know, spread something on online or whatnot? But I had to realize and look at myself and like, wait a minute. Is that connected to the purpose of, of what, what, what I'm doing here? Um, and is that my true intention that, you know, that I, that I want to get out of this? And both of those answers are no, right? Because, again, this is about healing, right? It's about sharing stories, you know, to, pr to promote healing. And the way that I do that is by having real conversations with people, sharing my own stories, and that in itself is going to help somebody, it's going to help me, it's going to help the guests, it's going to make the entire ship flow mm -hmm. the way that it's supposed to, you know. So I, I, love, I, I, I love that aspect um, of what you guys are saying. I think the nature of the world is changing in that way too, even with owning your own business, right? Like we're defying walls here and like you, you can do things without a building and a space. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, your life is your business. That's right. Right? That's like, right. and I say that and I think people are like, oh, you're like, your life is your business. No, 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 no. What I mean is your life is your own business. That's right. So whatever choice, so the power is in choice. Mm -hmm. It's not in this idea of like I have, because it's also a choice to, it's, owning a business is not for everyone. I mean, we didn't make a, a lot of money the first five years, y'all. You know what I mean? It takes a minute. We were just so grateful that we were able to pay others and we had employees and this whole thing and this whole maturation. But we were lightweight like, okay, when are we going to get paid? <laughs> right. <laughs> that was for more than Some five days, years. Thank God we were a family and we operate cyclically, like spherically, mm -hmm. you know, in our, and people may think that's weird, but when it comes to money, I think that this is why we have worked because we've yeah. been in some challenges that would have destroyed families. Yeah. But because we are sharers and givers naturally, we're going to make sure we all okay. Right. You know, and so during those times where we were like, 
yikes, like everyone's taken care of, good, but we're not. So, but we had to come together and share resources to get right. us through those times. Mm. But I like to, because, you know, to echo what you were saying is just like, you know, your life is your business and that, that choice That's to right. like drop in and be like, all right, I don't want to own my own business, but I do want to cultivate some cooperative experiences. Well, maybe I work as a social worker and then I do this or that. And so that's where we're living now. And I yeah. think that we got to expand into this idea that if we don't know ourselves, we're in trouble. That's right. Because there's too many options. That's right. And I see these young kids. I have a 21-year-old. They're like, oh, I wonder if I can do this. I can do that. I can do all these things because you can learn in a second. Right. You know, but what, underneath all of that, what does that mean? Right. It means that if you don't have a relationship with yourself, you're in trouble. So this is the work. It's not just, oh, self-care. It's really taking the time to... Um, use your whole life as a tool and also to study it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because so much for y young people, you know, everything is on the internet now. You know, I didn't grow up with the internet for the first, I don't know, however many years of my life. So it's weird because they come out the gates connected to others and right. looking at others' lives on YouTube and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like the direction is outward instead of in. Mm -hmm. So now the, the learning does have to be sort of, you know, you got to talk about it. We got to, you know, figure out practices to help cultivate that. That's why I kind of love the selfie movement because they were, they were, they were asking a question. They're like, hell, there was really a, a cry for support. They're like, look at me. Who am I? Who is this person? Like they, you know, you say a child shall lead the way. And it's like, we really pay attention, especially our age range. I'm almost 40. I'm getting older. <laughs> 40 feels good, y'all. ain't getting old. I'm getting old. Y'all getting better. Y'all not getting old. Cut it out. Cut it out. You know, and it's like our generation, we have to look back and we have to really listen to the youth right now. They, they are crying out for support and a specific kind of support. Mm -hmm. They don't need the, the whole um, hierarchy anymore. They don't, yeah. they don't, they, they'll disrespect you in a second because oh, they don't like they don't that. <laughs> They're like, no, I know as much as you, so whatever. But if you come at them real, they want real. They That's want right. honest. When, and they right. can feel that energy. Right. And so if we have more people or more humans out there that are willing to go on this journey of supporting, not thinking we know everything, they just need support, right? The youth right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how, how can we truly support them? What tools can we give? And I think our yoga carriage, you know, really offers some tools for them to really check in with themselves in a way that's, it's not just yoga, right? It's like this idea of observation and, mm -hmm. and stillness and, and turning off the technology for a moment so you can really feel what it feels like to feel alive in your own body with your own things. Right, right.